Hello, my friends. I hope that you are having an absolutely fantastic day today. I am back with a product review. Now, back in December 2012, I wrote to the manufacturers of QuickPod asking them if they would be so kind as to send me one of their models to review and test. And they responded positively and actually sent me their top of the line model. The QuickPod DSLR POV retails for about 70 US dollars. I think $69.95 is the price. And I told them that I would put it through the paces and give you my honest opinion. And to show you that I'm a man of my word through my month-long test in the Philippines, I just about wore off the name on the handle of the QuickPod. So I really used and abused this device, but thank you QuickPod for sending it to me. So what do I really think about the QuickPod and the QuickPod DSLR POV in particular? But before I get to that, let me go over some of the specifics. Now, this is their heavy duty model. So it is not light, it is I wouldn't say heavy, but you know it's in your hand. And since this is designed for handy cams and DSLRs, that is a good thing because this will support up to two kilograms or 4.4 pounds. It comes in at 18 inches. And when you extend the three sections, it'll go out to 53 inches or 135 centimeters. So it goes really far out there. And it's made from heavy duty plastic, so it is weatherproof, but more importantly, it is waterproof. And I can attest to that because I took this bad boy scuba diving down to depths in excess of 30 meters or around 100 feet. So this thing lasts and it does well. So let's go over the actual device. It is a standard quick pod monopod, meaning that it is turned on its end. Typically a monopod is narrow at the bottom and fat at the top. This is fat at the bottom because that's where your hand goes and then tapers to the top where the platform is. So the base of this particular quick pod has a few interesting features. Now right here there is a hole that is there for a very specific reason. Number one, since this is waterproof, you can take it scuba diving, snorkeling, whatever you want to do. And as it fills with water, when you take it back up, the water drains out here. But on land, it actually ships with this attachment here, right here. It's a little rubber ball, knobby thing that screws in here and creates a bottom that you can use this device now as a regular monopod, putting it on a surface, and then you can freely rotate it around. And that is great because I use that several different times while filming in the Philippines. It also has a little catch right here where you can thread through the accessory that ships with it, the wrist strap. Now, this part of the wrist strap is great. It even comes with a plastic coater. So when it's around your wrist, it doesn't really hurt you. However, the nylon strap they actually use to affix it to the quick pod isn't exactly the strongest thing out there. And on my second try, it actually broke and I wasn't able to tie it back effectively to get it to work for the rest of the trip. Now, that doesn't mean that it's bad. It just didn't work for me because uh, I, as I said, I used and abused this. I had this thing hanging off of boats, hanging out of tricycles, Jeeps, uh, underwater. I was using it a lot and I just don't think I really use this the way it was designed to be used. Uh, the base is also kind of nice. You have a smooth plastic grip here, but on the back side, it's a little um, textured, shall we say, a little rubberized texture. So when you're holding it the way it's designed to be held, your, your fingers are on the texturized part and your palm is on the smooth part. And then when you turn it over to the opposite way, your fingertips are still on the rubberized part and your thumb your thumb is on the texturized part, giving you a pretty solid grip. Uh, if you turn it sideways, you still have a really good grip, but um, not as good as the other ones. So maybe in future versions, they can rubberize the entire thing a little bit so you don't have a little slippage. But this is heavy duty. This is really, really strong. And the grip works really, really well because during some of my filming activities, I was hanging off the side of a boat with a camera on the end and waves would crash off. This thing was fully extended. Waves would crash up and hit the camera and knock my arm back. Yeah. 
I had no problem. I had no wrist strap, so I was hanging on for dear life, and it never once felt loose in my hand, never once got away from me. It was awesome. The Quick Pod, this model comes with three different extendable sections, and they work easy. They have little flashes, uh, uh, I don't know, latches here that, that lock into place, and it works well whether it's on land or underwater. It's really easy to use, and you can gauge how far you want the camera away from you as well. So if you're using something like a GoPro with an extremely wide angle of view, you don't have to be that far away from you. But if you're using a normal point and shoot camera or your video camera, your DSLR, that has a narrower range of focus and a narrower field of view, you may want this farther away from you. So great for that. The top is what I really love about this quick pod. So it has a little mirror here. If you've had an older cell phone, you've, you've seen these before and it helps you approximate what you're going to be seeing out of your camera. So that's really helpful if you're not a normal vlogger like myself. So because when I see the camera lens, I know where I'm supposed to be and that's not a problem. But uh, doing a couple shots and things where you're filming yourself and other people. This is really, really handy. The actual top is also really, really cool. There are 13 different positions. You simply unlock it and it goes a full 180 degrees. So six in front, six in back, and then straight up top. And then the top platform is ultra cool because it's not just a slide in locking thing like you're typical tripod, it is a locking slide mount, and that is bodacious. So it actually ships with two different sleds for this top. The first one is the GoPro sled, and during my trip, I had my underwater housing attached to this, the dive housing. I loved it. I was able to switch between my land mode and my diving mode with no problem at all. And even down below, it has a marking so you know which way the camera is supposed to face. That is pretty damn cool. So here's my GoPro with my microphone attached to it, attached to the sled. And the way it works, it just slides in and then locks in the place. And it doesn't go anywhere from that. I mean, it doesn't want to go anywhere. No, 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 you're not going to go anywhere, are you? No. And then you just push the button and it slides right off. That is pretty cool. And from there, you can just see how you want it to be, and you start filming, whether it be close or far away. I love this thing. And I shot a total of six travel videos in the Philippines using nothing but the GoPro and the QuickBot in a variety of different modes. So this is what I would call like the standard mode facing you so you can film that way, but it also has what I like to call the POV mode. So if you're walking around and you want to film what's in front of you, I use this predominantly for filming scuba diving scenes. So as I was swimming through different wrecks, I could get the forward action. And there's a different couple of things you can do with a GoPro that you may not have to do with other cameras in post-production, and that's invert the camera orientation. And I found that very, very helpful because, say if you invert the camera, and then hold it like this, and say, here's the top of the water, you can actually film the top of the water as your boat's moving, or from a moving vehicle that, for that matter, as you're moving through it, and this little monopod is up on deck, and you get some great shots that way. Conversely, you can do just the opposite. Go off from in front of a vehicle, or as I was using it several times, walking. I was walking, and then I was able to hold it in front, and get great shots of my feet. Ooh, there are my feet running, ah! Great, great, great. One other thing that I thought was very, very handy, and let me uh, take the slit off for a second here, is that the this model ships with this little washer. It's even marked Quick Pod, and it's for use with turning the screw on this. So if you don't have a coin handy, you can do it. So, what I would do from time to time is actually angle the camera on the sled. Let me lock it back in place. So you can see that's the orientation. And you can see my camera is now angled. So when I put it back on, it's not facing straight forward. It's facing off at an angle. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, let me show you why. 
So from time to time, I wanted to film the vehicle I was in. So I would hold the orientation this way, and this way I was able to turn the camera just a little and get not only my vehicle, but also forward facing information as well. It was great, it really worked out extremely well. So uh, those are the features, those are the aspects of the QuickPod. And like I said, I filmed six total videos with this. So what are my thoughts on this? Well, to be blatantly honest, I wasn't sure I was going to like this. Uh, I'm 6'4", I have long arms, and for years I have been vlogging with a handy cam and an assortment of other cameras, and I hate carrying stuff with me. I would always go out and just film myself with my camera, and I had no problem doing that. I got used to doing that. I got so accustomed to doing that that I actually loathe having to bring extra equipment with me until I use this. This is freaking awesome. I love this thing. The ability to extend this out and get shots in front of me, from above me, down below, from around, get vehicle shots, and have it be so light and so compact was a godsend. This thing was phenomenal. It worked incredibly incredibly well and I honestly can't imagine filming videos out and about in Seoul or around the world without something like this. This tool is fantastic. Even though it's designed for something like a DSLR or a Handycam, it's not really something I would probably use it for because anyone who's been a long time vlogger knows when you have your camera way the hell out there, your arm gets tired because of physics. You got a massive amount of weight at the end and you're trying to hold the camera steady and it just wants to go down. So you put a, a two kilogram camera on this thing, extend it all the way out to 53 inches, 135 centimeters, and you have an enormous amount of weight down at the end. You're trying to struggle and keep it steady so you get a great shot. And it's just really, really tough to do. There are a few times where I was trying to get shots with just the GoPro extending this out all the way, and I had a really hard time keeping it steady. Now that is not a design flaw of the QuickPot. It is just physics. You put some weight out at the very, very end, and you try to hold it steady without any kind of bracing in the middle, you're gonna have some problems. But as a device to record with, this was freaking Awesome, I love this thing. I used it to record myself, used it to take a couple shots of Joe and myself while we're out in various locations on the Philippines, hanging off boats, getting frontward facing shots, getting backward facing shots, underwater POV shots, filming me, filming myself and the dive master. It was amazing. And like I said, getting those frontward facing walking shots, brilliant, brilliant. It worked incredibly well. Now, QuickPod makes a whole mess of different lines and models, some designed for point and shoot cameras, some made specifically for GoPros. Like I said, this is the top of the line model made for DSLR, Handycams, and GoPros. If you want a great tool that is compact, relatively inexpensive, that will help you in your vlogging, I really recommend these things. These are awesome and Thank you so much for sending me this. I can't wait to use it even more. I love it. Anyway, for more information and some other tips and pictures, click on the link, go to chiranger.com. You can see the full review there as well as my unboxing video. So until next time, be true to yourself and always be awesome.